What up my freaks, Rovinus and Sight here with part 21 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, we have completed the long victory objective, finishing the final worthy foe battle which had Luther Harkin lead a bunch of Dusk Raiders to, well, their doom, I suppose. We also got a really nice battle after that with Herman Skellen who managed to hold off Ikit Claw and another full stack of Skaven as they attempted to take over Car Castle Carcassonne, which was barely defended. And very well done to Herman Skellen and we do have to reward him for making a name for himself and I'm thinking about making him lead the uh, Jade Daimyo, Jade Ronin and this uh, variant of the uh, uh, of uh, the Ordo Profundum armies. We'll also get to try out the Jade Daimyo and the Jade Ronin and the Depth Guard Revenant Haunters uh, this time around. Well, actually the Daimyo is going to be traveling, but uh, the rest of the units. At this time around, as Grimgor is on approach to Jarna Grund. We also have Lamia, which we are opposed to take. After all, we do still have two quests remaining the Guardian, Library Guardian quest at Lamia and Carcassonne. And then we do have to actually hold on to Carcassonne to get there, which we hopefully will. Anyway, let's see what we've got to do. Arkin, I guess you're going to immediately land, and Lamia won't like that, but well, that's their problem. Uh, don't think you actually needed to build anything, as I recall. Although I guess we could build this one. The unit XP and casualty or punishment rate. Frankly, it's not going to be too valuable to us, but, uh, well, valuable enough. Mostly because Harkin's army is already pretty much maxed out in those regards. Uh, let us upgrade you. Casualty or punishment is always nice to have, nonetheless. Uh, don't want to waste the metal on the other structures, so we will not, as we will still need the metal for building the libraries and stuff. All right, that's Harkin. Zacharias. Still need to get you another uh, ghosty unit, but for now you're heading out towards Bill Bali and oh, we have attrition here. I can't say I like that very much. Uh, this won't make us immune to attrition. Hmm. I mean, it's probably not going to be that much attrition. Let's find out how much. I'm a little bit wary of him catching the Skaven Plague from Castle Carcass Sun, which is kind of why I wanted him in this territory rather than in our own. And... Oh, it's actually fairly considerable. All right, we're going to have to risk the plague and hope we don't get it. And I guess sort of the same thing for Herman Skellen. We can't even raid this territory because the Skaven Plague is causing such a huge growth a debuff here. It's going to take 13 turns to get to the uh, Tier 3 so that we can get the library. I might even, if we find a good place with most of our armies, just go through several turns just so that we can move forward towards that and the next quest. Uh, Conradine, move away so that you don't bother Aberash. Aberash is going to head in here. I think these don't work anymore. At least I would assume so. I mean, the last time we didn't, you will encounter this dragon again later, and then you will get all the rewards. I'm going to try this again, but yeah, I see we have the plus 35 influence, which doesn't even exist as far as we're concerned, which means... Uh, and this is probably no longer functional. It's just the, the leftover of Imric's uh, thing, but let's try it again. And yeah, nothing happens, so we can ignore those, uh, at least from now on. Then, Abrash, we're going to move you slightly more towards Fort Dwarslav. I do have an idea. Uh, huh. This won't make us immune to... Hmm. But if we get discovered, we won't be able to heal up. Damn. So here's what I was thinking. If we declare war on Bok Bok the lethal, these guys might both try to attack us at once, which would be fairly nice. Alright, you know what? We're gonna risk attrition for this. Gonna go right here. We're gonna declare war on Bok Bok. I smell things. Like so. I'm not gonna ask anybody for anything. These two aren't at war with each other, so the AIs might be willing to cooperate enough to attempt to fight Aberash's army together. I don't know if they will, but, uh, well, we gotta give them a shot, right? Uh, we'll also move Conradine over here. I'd like to see whether Kerrig Doom is a tier 5. Might want to set up another fortress all the way back here. And just so that we can essentially, uh, not govern so much as uh, prevent these guys from moving around. Uh, Edmund von Sinclair. Ah, yes, you guys. I've been meaning to try out those Fleshwalker Mongrels, and we only need one more rank on this one, at least, to rank up to Doom Wolves or uh, Doom Wolf Knights or whatever they're called. So, we're going to first move you here to Wurtbad. 
And I think we're gonna fight this because, well, we want to see these guys in action a little bit. Uh... Look, it's not much of an army, but I think it'll still be worthy of a fight just by virtue of uh, wanting to. Then... We'll take Reinhardt, who unfortunately lacks Albrecht Nictus for now. And we'll take the Drakenhof Templar Skyreavers and the Bloodkin Thrall Warriors. Like so. Alright, then Nictus, however, removed you. Then we'll put Terran Scans in here into Edmund's army. And I believe that's all we need to consider right now, so away we go. Just a little fight just to allow the Fleshwalkers to do their thing. Go, go, go. Alrighty, here we go, and I'm really hoping that this particular map works out in terms of not giving us one of them, uh, one of them desyncs. I really want to see the weir weirbats, uh, the uh, mongrels here in action. So we're gonna try to make our way through that gate, and then we're going to uh, see if we can. Anyway, we're going to summon more bats, and we're going to hit the enemy up on top of the walls to start off, uh, mostly to try to focus down the enemy's Sylvanian crossbows, which appear to have left the walls already. And I'm gonna maybe summon some undead, some zombos with a bloodkin aspirant, but otherwise, in just a matter of annoying the Sylvanian crossbows, and I guess generally units inside the enemy settlement, while we try to bring that gate down. Uh, looks like Edmund here is having a little bit of a difficult time with attempting uh, to... Uh, uh, attempting to actually get those Sylvanian crossbows engaged. They seem to have gone up and down the walls a couple times, and he's kind of stuck. But that's okay. As long as they don't get back up there, that's fine. And our Grave Guard, our regular Grave Guard, are on the approach and will soon be making their own way up of those walls. In which case, we won't need our flyers to do that work for us. Alrighty, how's that gate looking? About halfway through it? Alright, well, we've got a little bit of work to put in, so... A few more bats to be summoned via our, well, bat summoning. And we can try to obliterate as many enemies, or at least watch Edmund obliterating as many enemies as he pleases, as it doesn't look like Vlad wants to contest him and down on the ground. And though, judging by his stats, he very well could. If he felt like it. Instead, it looks like our Grave Guard will be climbing those walls, and though it'll be a little bit of a like-on-like -like action, and because of the, uh, well, similar faction and... Technically, same faction, but <laughs> similar faction and uh, the same, essentially, color scheme here. Um, but no big. Uh, how's that gate looking? About 3,000 HP remaining, and we've got reinforcements as well. Frankly, we don't really need them, but hey, it's more flyers to enter the fray. Another lord, the Forsaken Circle, and uh, the regular Sky Reavers as well. Looks like the enemy has occupied a couple of towers, and we'll take a few hits to them. Uh, but that's alright. These guys aren't all that threatened uh, by that stuff. Gate is down to 950, and this is where the desync will be decided. If we can just bring it down the little bit of HP that remains to it, but we should allow the uh, mongrels into the city. 300, come on, you're nearly there, just get a few more hits into it, don't be bugged. And down goes the gate, lovely. With the gate down, we should allow these guys to, uh, to enter the fray, in theory. <laughs> Unless the desync causes them to do something else. But they're the main things I want to watch here, especially as we'll be upgrading, well, at least one off the bat, because because they're the, they have bat faces, uh, into uh, into those uh, Doom Wolf Knights. But but like a few more to get to and two, as I've already noted. Alrighty, and here we are. Let's see how they do at infantry blending. And how they are for taking damage themselves. They've got a relatively low melee defense at only 39. And, oh, they don't have a hunger. Wait, let me just see here. And they have regeneration instead, like a regular type of regeneration. Okay, okay, so they should still be just fine. I was worried that they wouldn't be healing themselves for a second.
And <laughs> oh, that one skeleton that uh, that went flying. Anyway, these guys continue making their way into the settlement. Actually, would love to have them face off against some skin wolves. Maybe we'll send this army to Norska uh, just to screw around over there. Could be the thing to do. I mean, we gotta send them somewhere, right? Anyway, our other units, our flyers, have landed over in the background. We are mostly using them to mince all the infantry out here. The uh, uh, the Abyssal Terror Knight also towering among the man, leading them, and giving us a nice uh, banner to fly over the uh, over the heads of the rest of our forces. But yeah, these guys will continue fighting in the shadows and on that side of the map while we allow our skin wolves, or no, they're not skin wolves, our uh, Fleshwalker Mon mongrels to do their thing among the enemy ghouls and skeletons here alrighty well keep on mincing them we'll check out how much damage they will have dealt compared to the other units at the end of the battle but the end of the battle does approach relatively quickly. Balance of power is about 90% now, and the walls have nearly fallen. We've also gotten our units of, uh, of our Bloodkin Thralls up those walls. Granted, they're not needed by the looks of it, as the Graveguard have absolutely taken the walls themselves, and only Vlad remains up here. And obviously, while well, the Graveguard wouldn't be able to bring Vlad down, at least not without, like, 15 minutes straight of attacking him. Um, but we can use our other units to do that. At the very least, all of Vlad's minions will fall shortly. And both up on top of the walls and below. And yeah, look at that uh, breach that we've made in the enemy walls here. This was uh, previously surrounded, and now the uh, Fleshwalker Mongrels have certainly entered deeper into the settlement. And do have some graveyards standing against them as well, but it is the sword and board variety, and if they're anything like ours, they're more and defensive than offensive, so we're not going to be uh, too threatened uh, by them doing damage to the Bat Boys. Oh, that poor graveguard just lost the upper upper half of its torso, or its upper torso, whatever. Anyway, with that, the graveguard melts away. I do believe our lords touched down and killed off of Vlad, though that might have been in part because the enemy army suffered its uh, morale shock and all started to crumble away, so Vlad's healing in combination with being attacked by two lords was just not enough to overcome. All right, a very nice job to the uh, mongrels. Let's see here how they did in terms of their uh, in terms of their capabilities or their uh, kill count kill counts called kill count All right, there we go. I have no concept of how that looked on the replay, but hopefully it was all right, and we got to see those uh, uh, those Fleshwalker Mongrels in action. They did plenty of damage, 131, 146, and 160 kills, and we will raise the place. And was that the last territory of Vlad? Yeah, another Obsidian Blade. Nice. And no, it wasn't. There appears to be... One more Waldenhof. Did he resettle Waldenhof, or did I never send somebody to destroy? That might have been the case as well. Uh, okay, so what we now need to do is move Maximilian Jaeger to ferry over these three units of Graveguard, which are supposed to be in Edmund von Sinclair's army, as he is, after all, a Graveguard-centered lord. Move you over here. And I imagine that we can't immediately... Oh, maybe we can immediately transfer. Swell. All right, am I forgetting anything? He has a Bloodkin Aspirant. We need at least one more Fleshwalker Mongrel, but it may be a while before we get one. So let's take the Graveguard. And we're looking good. 20 out of 20 in your army. You can move back, and you're at 20 out of 20 as well. Actually, you'll be at uh, 19 out of 20 in a sec, as we'll need to move Albrecht there. But anyway, uh, let's move you in, I guess, channeling stance. I guess not moving you anymore, but uh, keep you in channeling stance, such that we are able to uh, heal up, and then we'll find some more enemies. Drake is around. We may want to fight her or uh, move somewhere else. It's... 
unlikely that Abrash is going to be able to defeat every single enemy lord uh, that he wants to, unless we just sort of hole up in all of our castles, but, uh, Nah, I don't know. Might get tedious even trying to do such a thing. Uh, we'll want to move past Karazakarak with you. We can't reach it right now anyway, so we'll just go right here. And we'll hit Karazakarak next turn. Looks like it's a tier 5, but it's mostly got Gabo defenders, and that shouldn't be all that concerning. It'll be a little bit stronger once Scarsnake stitches are up and running. Uh, but, well, probably not all that strong anyway. Uh, do we want anything here? In terms of upgrades, while we're in the appropriate stance. I don't think we do. I mean, Anarch's army is pretty good. We're still not maxed out with it. Although, we are now able to upgrade you two, if we wanted to. So you can be Draconov Templar Demigriff Knights. Oh, they're expensive, a ten, And you can do the same. And then you two can become Draconov Templar Regular Knights. Draken Hoofs. Uh, Draken Hoofs should probably remain as regular ones, so yeah, we'll upgrade them last. Alright, like so, and like so. Alright, and now we just need these guys to level up in order to become Drakenov Templar Inner Circle Knights, and we'll have all the unitypes in here. Uh, you two probably should still evolve into the infantry type units. Hmm. I'm just wondering whether we need another Draconov Templar Sky Reavers in here. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, we have them in decent numbers in other uh, armies, so may not be super necessary. Uh, let's get to you, 585, to be upgraded. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Huh. 5 might... Hmm, maybe we could do 3 of these. Wait, 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, either way, I think we'll upgrade you... Uh, to a veteran. I mean, we want to max out these armies anyway, and while we're here, right? Uh, you two become a vet- Oh, it's still not doing it. Okay, okay, okay. Unclick everything and then re-click everything, and then hopefully that'll, well, make everything click. Uh, upgrade and upgrade, please. Ooh, down to 3k only, but there we go. Keep you, you and you, as a regular Templar warrior. I'm just checking their stats or comparing their stats. We can use the great swords as more of a uh, damage dealer, I guess. And then we can make you into one of the regular types. And then you, I guess, will be another one of these reavers. Unless we want another hero in this army. Though I think two is, well, sufficient. Or we could do more cav, but I, know, I think at this point we're okay. Upgrade. And there we go. Four, four, and then one more, but I'm not going to spend the 1.1k or whatever it is right now. At least not until we have got these guys upgraded. Anyway, that's an arc. Heinrich, yes, you are going to get a nice, fun little fight against Mr. Grimgore here. So, now let's move Maldred Hopped Anderson to reinforce. He has a stack and a wa in there, after all. Plus, Grimgore himself is going to be a uh, toughie, as he generally is. Uh, can we buff you up by putting you into encamp stance, giving you a little bit of extra melee defense and leadership? Yes, we can. And away we go. He shouldn't run from this. Uh, Pyrrhic victory. All right, let's see. Oh, four giants. Wow. <laughs> That's not great. Uh, that's not great. Uh, we'll have to make sure that we use Heinrich and uh, Maldred here to specifically focus those giants down, or else they'll bring our uh, our other units down. I don't know how the Depth Guard Revenant Haunters managed to lose uh, units, but anyway, we'll get to try out the Oathbound Revenants, the Depth Guard Revenant Haunters, and the Jade Ronin all at once. And maybe I should have upgraded the Deck Watchers after all to Elder Reavers uh, just to try them, but. Nonetheless, I think this should be a pretty fun fight. Four giants. Go. Huh. Weird. No speech. Uh, unless he only said one word and I missed it as the battle started. Anyway, uh, here we go. Unfortunately, it looks like we poor lucked our way into a, uh, into a dark battle, but on the bright side, the Morngul Haunters, or whatever they're called here, the Depth Guard Revenant Haunters, a variant of Morngulls, are uh, nice and glowy and visible, so uh, there's still that. So it looks like they used the Morngul Haunter model with some Depth 
guard armor pieces on uh, then we can see those depth guard helms and uh, well the uh, topmost portion of their armor uh, I've always loved Morngulls they're very fun a unit both of their effectiveness and their animations are always really fun to watch Morngull Haunter heroes in particular are always fantastic and I always sing their praises when uh, uh, when playing the Vampire Coast now, just taking a look at this map here yeah it is still dark but somewhat visible we've also got Grimgore here 96 melee attack and 69 nice a melee defense and nearly 800 weapon strength and that's prior to his buffs and prior to activating Gitsnik and the blood forged armor there so he's looking pretty good we're gonna start the battle up by touching down upon the uh, enemy a doom diver catapult as we obviously don't want them to obliterate any of our units while we move in love that effect from that blood forged armor from Grimgore as he moves in to do battle with uh, Heinrich and starts to do damage but we're going to two on one Grimgore here as well he's a pretty darn threatening Lord all right wait I, we've debuffed him pretty heftily dropping his melee defense down to basically nothing but he's still got a lot of stuff on him so uh, it'll take some work I'm more interested in the depth guard revenant hunters moving in but it's gonna take them a little bit of time and huh, this the lighting in this map is quite weird in that we can see that as you move away the camera it looks like it's light over there but as you move closer it's uh, it's covered in the dark hmm that's quite interesting. And damn, look at that. Heinrich is down to nearly half of his HP to Grimgore, who is hitting him wild to higher level. Uh, Lords on zombie dragons both hit him at the same time. Gotta be careful here, unless we lose Heinrich in this way. Don't underestimate Grimgore, as he's a scary, scary lord. Also, hopefully we get some uh, work for the Oathbound Revenant Knights. And uh, they do look like, because they uh, they have the same sort of color I scheme because of the skeletal steeds, that the black knights do that they could lead black knights into combat they are by the looks of it a type of white anyway i might even decide to keep some black knights in this particular army and then combine them with thrall knights and some ordo knights just a lots and lots of different kind of cavalry units anyway back to this for the now and damn we're down to three quarters hp on one lord and less than half hp on heinrich while grimgore is still at half really gotta be careful here and gonna pop our abilities and all this we've been healing the entire time as well so it's not like these guys haven't uh, been healing each other up they have been taking a few arrows from the enemies, though, and there we go. Look at all that healing coming in. Invocated Oath on top of the Helm of the Blood Keep and on top of Potion of Toughness all at the same time. Heinrich dropped very, very close to a quarter of his HP, and I didn't want him to begin to crumble away, so we activated all the abilities to make sure that Grimgor didn't bring him down. All right, a couple more hits. And I believe Grimgore will fall, but in the meantime, the rest of our units have entered the fray. Here, the Depth Guard Revenant Haunters and the uh, Jade Ronin will be fighting together. Can't wait to get a few more of these guys in our army as well. Looks like they're going to be eating plenty of arrows while they're here, unfortunately. But that's why we have our cavern. Ooh, they, with their debut, it looks like they're going to be facing off against a pretty darn worthy foe themselves. Black Orcs have moved in with those great axes. And of course, those four giants are still to be contended with. And they can certainly knock out a unit of these with every hit or two. Looks like Grimgore has finally dropped and we continue healing ourselves up. Going to peel one unit away to start hunting giants or one lord away to start hunting giants while we go after Scram to Ruffy, the uh, enemy uh, black orc big boss. I believe Grimgore starts with Scram to Ruffy, mostly because I remember that name. At least I'm reasonably sure. All right, and the Morngul Haunters looks like they're in a little bit of a contest with some of the enemy cab, which have charged us in the back here, but they're also among the enemy infantry as well. The enemy infantry, though, is not having a particularly good time against them, and our lord has joined the fray as well. And there, okay, there's two giants here now, both of them going after those Jade Ronin. Gotta be careful, they've lost two of their number at this point. And if this should continue with the giants 
hitting them so hard that, uh, well, that may lose them more units. One of the giants who drops, but not down, merely uh, knocked down, I uh, should say. And both of our units of Depth Guard Revenant Hunters are also in Rampage. We got a similar thing going on over on this side. I appreciate the fact that the AI has separated its giants, so there's two giants on this side and two giants on this side as well. They're working together quite nicely. I don't imagine the Revenant Haunters are going to be too effective against the Giant, though, though I do also wonder how effective the Giants will be against these guys. Uh, let's see. So the Revenant Haunters, just out of curiosity, have... Where are you? If I could select the unit. They have 20 armor only and 65% physical resistance, so we could do the same thing and give them those banners that reduce their armor in favor of giving them other abilities, which wouldn't be much of a loss. Once again, a great idea from the comments there. Especially that banner of Lichdom, not the bat banner, but the uh, the one that gives them basically 100%, 120% was it? Uh, physical resistance, as we saw on the uh, Phantoms of the First Keep. Oh man, am I... I I'd be tempted to mix units as well. It would be nice to make uh, an army with uh, lots of Revenant Haunters in combination with uh, First Keep Phantoms. I just fear that we won't get enough units over the course of this campaign to be able to do both. I also think that this mod needs to eventually add another Lord type, a fourth Lord type not belonging to any particular order. The thing is, currently each of the Lords buff a uh, uh, a specific Ordo, but aren't really capable of buffing all of the other Ordos, which is unfortunate because it sort of uh, disincentivizes the player to... Uh, oh, look at those wings uh, rising above the uh, battlefield there. Uh, it sort of disincentivizes the player from combining Ordo forces into one, and instead kind of incentivizes you to use Ordo-focused stuff. If there was just a sort of Blood Knight, generic Blood Knight Lord, uh, that could buff all the Ordos, similar in the way that Aberash does, because his tree buffs, uh, well, as you choose, can buff any and all Ordo units. Because he has two for Blood Dragons in his red line, two for... Uh, the other two for the other order and two for the other order for Fundum and Templaris. So what I'm getting at is it would be nice to have a uh, fourth generic lord specifically for those types of mixed Ordo armies that doesn't necessarily have allegiance to one particular Ordo so that we could buff everybody. And, you know, engage in more army variety, that sort of thing. Anyway, it looks like we have one here. Unfortunately, we didn't get a crazy amount of use of our cav, at the very least not in the main portion of the combat. But they did ride around and destroy all those enemy archer units in the background. Not a particularly interesting action for the cav, but it was fun to watch the uh, Revenant Haunters and the Jade Ronin in meh. In Melan, we'll have plenty more action for the Cav to come to come in future battles. All right, we're gonna chase down as best we can, though, since this is another one of these uh, underway battles. The enemy are just gonna run off screen. Alrighty, quite the nice fight. I was uh, I was pretty happy with that. And what the heck? Did oh, I could have sworn he already had a talisman, but now it appeared we got an opal amulet. It, huh? That's weird. All right, I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe I accidentally unclicked it uh, from him, but uh, we'll we'll redo his items at some point. Uh, yeah, pretty happy with the battle and with the performance of the Depth Guard Revenant Haunters. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't uh, get them well get them to do what they wanted to do, which was go into stock and then loop around the enemy army. But they performed very well, losing no units, and actually the enemy really struggled to damage them at all, which is great. The Jade. Ronin seem to have done about on par with the unit of Depth Guard Deck Watchers, which, considering that they currently have no buffs and no veterancy, is a pretty good sign, though at the same time, they did take the most damage by far, losing 6 of their 20 number, though that was in part because we did deploy them on the flank, and thus the most dangerous position. And lastly, Grimgor. He certainly gave us a fight. He nearly brought down one of our lords, though fortunately the sheer amount of 
healing that we had available between the Potion of Toughness and the Invocation and the two uses, or six uses, whatever, uh, of the Horn of the First Keep, these guys were just healing the heck out of themselves. So, and that worked out for them. And through all those captives, the uh, rest of this army will run. Warrior. Maybe they should have left Grimgor alive for Aberash to bring down, but at the same time, he's still one of the most powerful factions remaining, so we'll probably see him again. And A, Heinrich gets the uh, seasoned campaigner. Nice. We want that on everybody. Still not sure where you have this, but uh, I'll, I'll deal with you later. Uh, let's auto-resolve the remnants of this little force, and then we can return to Jarnagrund. We're gonna have to auto-resolve this one, cause, well, the, uh, hopefully it doesn't damage our units too badly. We're at 14 Jade Ronin. No, none of them died, but some of the Death Guard did die, interestingly enough. Eh. Interesting, especially considering they didn't during the, uh, the battle, but the Enthrall, the Captives will heal them all to full anyway, so it hardly matters. All right. Some items that probably won't matter all that much to us. We will also then return to Jarnagrund, at least for now. We're waiting to max out those Thrall stables and be able to build a units after all. I like so. Though I suppose we could start recruiting some Bloodkin Thralls. Yeah, go ahead. Recruit some Bloodkin Thralls. They don't necessarily have to be in this army, and, well, some would have to be in the Jade Ronin's army anyway, to round out those numbers, so it still works out well. Also, you've hit level 30. Oh, you hit level 30 before. You've hit level 31. I was thinking of giving you a mentor, but you were already a mentor. Well, it ain't that mental. Uh, Curse of the Revenant is up, and then Red Fury will be next. Immortal Horror really helped out in that battle, as we got that uh, much-needed regeneration against Grimgor, who is still an absolute beast. Zacharias, Rotep, and Rudolf Barakmir. I been meaning to replace Zacharias here for what feels like ages, but I haven't done so yet. Uh, let's do this. Uh, For Honor and Glory, Immortal Horror, The Hunger. Mm, invocation, Curse of Undeath. And Honor or un oh, honor or Death, we need another point in this, or are we better off getting a point in Beguile? Probably doesn't matter. Get it? This. I'm thinking we can auto resolve this little fight. We'll see. But we should be able to handle them. Also, sorry, my neighbor's dog is a barkin. So if you can hear that, I do apologize. I think Tide Call against the rats. It really worked out well when we uh, fought the huge numbers of la uh, rats. Lats. Oh. <laughs> uh, last episode. Uh, we're the Weeping Blades and... Or just Blades, rather. I can't shake the weeping aspect of it. And I blame... Uh, and I blame Deathmaster Snitch for it. Uh, do we need another point in Kraken's pull? I feel like I'd rather get to Taunt, which we can not do so if we get another point in there. So we'll do that, we'll get you... I don't know, let's buckle our swashers and then let's taunt. Oh! I didn't get you... Oh, no, I didn't get him on Natural Force and Karn and have to redo the whole thing. Oh, good job, ruin us. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Alright, let's do this again. Uh, Disciple of Abrash, Slippery, Strength of Steel, one point in Kraken's pull, three points remaining, one in Heroic Killing Blow, one in Swashbuckler, and one in Taunt. There we go. I'm not even going to look at it anymore because I'm, I fear that I will uh, find Let's something I also it did it wrong. Uh, let's see if this can be out of result. Raven. Hey, oh, you're not close enough. You Student get closer. Of the wonder, do this. No, we still have to fire. We're going to manually fight this super quick. We've no choice in the matter. We got some free spawnage in our army. And huh, it's another one of these uh, sort of pseudo underway. But well, I mean underway battles, but not an underway interception battle. But I guess that works for us. Minus the fact that the enemy will be able to run off the field really quickly. Which is a little bit on the annoying side, but what can you do? Start a plum, start battle, max out the speed, our reinforcements are gonna move in, and... Can we actually move them onto... This would take four minutes, eh? That's fine. And we can speed on through that. Oh, are the enemy actually moving towards us? Nah, they're gonna sit right there. Honestly, I'm not actually sure that this saves us all that much time, but uh, we'll see. Uh, do you want to move in and charge them? There's a unit of rattling guns there. Let's wait until this is like down to two minutes. Actually, let's not. I'm too lazy. All right, just got to watch out for the rattling guns. The catapults are going to hopefully be relatively irrelevant. 
We just gotta make sure we don't get too many of them hitting us. If you're wondering why I'm not transforming into snakey boy form, it's because the... Uh, uh, it's a flying unit, and we can't have only one flying unit on the map. Though I'm not entirely sure what'll happen with the reinforcements moving in. Alright, don't get killed by those ratlings. <laughs> Keep doing the dance and just get into melee combat before you die. There we go. And if the rats want to use their warp fire throwers on our unit, that's just fine. Alright, and you should probably try to move towards the ratlings. See if we can't make a path. Like so. Alright, that did decent. And run towards the rattling guns. We're gonna get hit by a few more units. And it feels so weird to be playing at max speed, but uh, it has to be done. Alright, uh, we don't need heroic killing blow as yet. Ah, there we go. There's our spawn. We don't care if they die. They are Zinchin spawn after all. Move, move, move. And you, sir, come on in. The water's fine. That should be more of a profundum thing. Well, I guess the, the lord that started this battle is a profundum lord, so it still works, damn it. Alright, get another tide call in. Actually, probably should check your mana just in case. And I think it's time to snakeify. Wait, you know what? Let's pop the World of Blades. Ah, I didn't say weeping blades this time. Good job, Ruinous. You're making up for screwing up that uh, skill point distribution earlier. Yes, yes, Profundum Bokat indeed. I uh, was going to transform, yeah, and then I didn't. Transform now. Alright, looks like our uh, Chaos Spawn of Zinch are fighting. I can't believe they didn't fix this. Why does the AI still pop random spawn of Zinch into uh, enemy armies? What's the point of that? <laughs> it's bizarre. Oh, damn. We transformed and immediately we get hit by that darn uh, uh, howling warp gale. Gotta be careful with that one. You, sir, should probably go hit those warp fire throwers. Snake, you good now? You solid. All right, uh, move towards those rattlings, and I guess heal yourself up a little bit, a teensy bit. Get a tide call moving through, I don't know, a blob of enemies, uh, just to try to speed up the matter and make sure those rattling guns are out and not about. I'm just amusing myself today. Uh, warp fire throwers, you got to be targets. Now let's pop a corner of the first uh, heap. It affects all allies in range, meaning... It doesn't care whether the units that it heals are undead or not, which is quite interesting. And because we obviously wouldn't be able to use the other uh, forms of healing on us. Uh, I should probably move the snake over here to dish out the damage. Let's go. Alright, we're probably going to get hit with another of those darn spills. We actually are going to get trapped by another Howling Warp. Alright, speed it back up to max. Just a teensy bit until that's over, and then go for the Grey Seer. I'm sick of that thing, and you're gonna bring him down. Slippery, heroic killing blow, and... You know, we don't need to use Taunt as yet. I think we can save that. Alright. I guess we can watch the... Uh, we can watch the Chaos spawn fight a little bit. I mean, it's not something we've seen in this particular campaign, though we have seen a lot of it in the Archaeon campaign. Though actually, funnily enough, not so much with the Zinchin spawn. And there's also the fact that the Zinchin spawn are quite a little bit different in SFO than they are in vanilla. But I guess that's true of all the... Did you stop chasing after? What the heck's wrong with you? Dude, come on. I trusted you for several seconds to take care of your business without, you know, being babysat. Come on now. Mm. Come on, Rudolph. Rudy. What are you doing to me? All right, let's get it back up while the uh, while the stupid thing ends. All right, there we go. Now you're gonna slow him down, and I think we do need to kill him off. Uh, I guess we can kill off the sword vermin. Sword vermin, storm vermin, with swords. But you know, oh, you had El Sif. I should have probably used that on you. Do we need any heals on the lords? Not really. I just want to make sure that the enemy lord dies, and as best we can, and the warp fire throwers die. I can't guarantee that we won't have. Uh, uh, okay, go, 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 go. I uh, can't guarantee that we won't have to deal with that again, those units, so best to kill off everything we can. In case there's another auto resolve. But we still run into the issue here, or ran into the issue here, where the enemy was able to get off the field just so darn quickly. Alright, well nice job you two. The enemy army was, well frankly it should have been auto-resolvable because it was pretty much all Skaven slaves. One unit of storm vermin and a couple of elite uh, range units which really didn't do much. And the catapults were never going to be threatening to this army in particular. Especially because the while the contamination on them is quite useful, it wasn't useful against the spawn of Zinch. Alright, uh, any point in healing or doing any of this? Probably not, just, just really scabbed as I guess. 
All right, now this army will back away and will it cross the river? Will we be able to chase it down again? Uh, I'm gonna hope that we will. You go into regular stance, can't reach him, fine. Go into march stance and then go here. And please tell me we can do this. Yeah, all right, great. I mean, we don't even really care about this army, it's just that we don't want them raiding around our territories. And hey, that gave us another trickster shard. Oh, well, that made it worthwhile. Uh, mm, I don't know, whatever. All right, very nice. Uh, you don't keep that, though. We'll give that to somebody else who could actually uh, make some use of it. You can go into raiding as well. Very nice. Very nice to the both of you. And what do you have another opal amulet? Seem to be getting tons of those. All right, Abyssal Revenant, while you're here, you are going to the Awakening to kill off this guy, hopefully get another empty dead, and then upgrade one of these empty dead into a fourth sister, and then hopefully these two into uh, Necro Serpent Riders, or whatever we're uh, Dread Sea Serpent Riders, or just regular Sea Serpent Riders, and whatever I was going to upgrade you into. Oh, one of these guys. Yeah, there's still a few upgrades to be done here. Plus, we gotta get these darn witch hunters off. And then, we can not travel through the Abyssal Riptide, but rather through towards and the Galleon's Graveyard and to Wolfwan. Finally. And plus, uh, we can actually maybe fight this just so to see the Abyssal Revenant in action. Hopefully they don't attack the Awakening. Alright, let's see who else has things that they can do. Uh, Fremont Helstein. Into writing stands right beside the place. So we need more metal ever, always more metal. Uh, this is. <laughs> uh, well, so the. Uh, well, with Aberash's. Uh, uh, with Aberash's children basically failing him constantly uh, and sort of misinterpreting uh, what his desires are in uh, not. Uh, fo and focusing too much on the martial valor aspect and not oh, so much it. on the don't feed on the weak aspect. Uh, I like to think of the idea that. Uh, uh, he also told them to uh, uh, to prove their metal or something like that, and they interpreted as that as to get more metal. You know, like the the metal metal, ha 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 ha. Honestly, that was too long of an explanation. It made it unfunny, but well, that's that's it is what it is. Anyway, away we go. Robbie von Stell, move to Jarn Grund, please. You have to join this army, hopefully before it separates itself. Uh, we can't recruit anything else here, and I do believe we're good to go for the next turn. Minus two things. Uh, okay, now wait, you can't raid. Because reasons. You can raid. We need another raider here outside and around Middenheim, I think. Uh, what do we have here? Eternal Discipline. Tempered Fury. Tempered Fury. Eternal Discipline. I don't like any of those. You're Immortal Disdain, but you're level 11. All right, you know what? Let's let's just get this guy here. Let's switch more, and we'll just use him to raid. I guess we can get another one somewhere. And we have another place. Uh, I guess we can do one here. If we actually need a lord, we'll just unsummon these guys. All right, we want everybody raiding for that metal, especially since we need to regrow the horde of the Abyssal Revenant, which just takes, which is going to take like sixty metal or so. Oh, game. Game. All right. I believe we're good. Let's double check diplomacy. I still want that Cathian alliance for our jade units slash eastern vampires. But it doesn't look like it. And I don't think anybody here we care about piecing out with. Earlier in the game, we kind of cared about piecing out with a bunch of factions because we uh, needed the money. Now the money's no longer really an issue. Character initiative's fine. And turn. All right, Ulrich Fluss, please don't you attack us. Uh, what is this? Oh, the plan. The plan sort of worked. It didn't quite work, but it sort of worked. Uh, in the sense that I was hoping that the rats would attack us together with Astrogoth, but at least Astrogoth attacked us himself, so you know what, that works for me. Uh, we are obviously going to fight that, and ooh, they do have the Dreadquake battery use. I do have to wonder how effective that's going to be against our... Uh, against our units here. I also noticed that the Blood Dragon Neophyte Warriors have a lot more melee attack than the uh, Disciples of the Path do, which is quite interesting. And actually they have more melee attack than... than the, oh well yeah, but these guys are halberdiers, yeah, 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 they're not great weapons, which does make sense. It's all fine, everything's fine, go.
the Eternal Wanderer. All righty, the Eternal Wanderer was nearly the Eternal Hunter, judging by how long we've been trying to hunt down uh, the uh, the army of Astrogoth are in hand, but we've gotten to him at last, and Abarash will get his duel, though I don't imagine Astrogoth in particular will be all that threatening to him. Nonetheless, we'll see. And there's a Lamasu in the sky, so Abarash will be starting on said Lamasu. And gotta make sure that we get rid of its aura because the uh, anti-magic aura that it has to uh, remove the magic damage from units is going to be particularly effective against our vampire army. And so Abarash will uh, quickly, hopefully, and bring it down. The Lamasu takes the first couple of hits and drops by about 30% of its HP. In the meantime, we've separated our army once again. We have the leader of the Flyers, our Blood Dragon champion, who is on that big old terror geist creature and is looking pretty fantastic up there as well i love the uh, hmm these calls look pretty interesting just, just a second here just a second here those are not human skulls, they have fangs, could be vampire skulls, kind of hard to say. Uh, but anyway, looking pretty good on that mount, wouldn't you say? And this guy is leading our flyers. Over on this side, we are using our Ordo Templaris unit to lead the uh, ground cab. I decided not to put him on his uh, barded nightmare, but instead to keep him on that manticore. We don't have to have him fly to lead the... Uh, uh, to lead the ground calves, we could just have him land and uh, lead with the manticore on the ground. It's just such a fantastic model, and I think I would be wrong to uh, not have him on it. I love seeing this thing fight. The color scheme, the skeleton works really well with the uh, skeletal stuff. Anyway, he's going to not be going after Astrogoth as Abarash has arrived and will instead turn upon Astrogoth's bodyguard, this bull centaur Toruk, while, uh, while Abarash goes after Astrogoth himself, though by the looks of it not for too long, as after a couple of hits, Astrogoth's already down to about half HP. And the rest of the battle is about to be joined as well, as our units of infantry have moved in, though it looks like some of our disciples of the past are starting to take hits from those blunderbusses. And these are vanilla blunderbusses, not SFO blunderbusses, so we have to be extremely wary of them. Uh, we've certainly faced off against the uh, Chaos Dwarfs with this army before, and we can most definitely recall the uh, the blunderbusses taking like half of the HP of the uh, uh, of our infantry very, very quickly. And this is why, and as we can see, the uh, Disciples of the Path Warriors are going to start dropping in HP like this. Though, of course, the enemy is also hurting their own Chaos Dwarf Warriors here, so I guess useful to something. Yeah, but look at that HP drop. And this is in slow mo. That was all of three seconds to lose like 30% of H 30 HP off one of our big units. And that's with the Invocated Oath damage resistance up and running as well. And don't underestimate those Chaos Dwarf blunderbusses. And that's why our flyers dropped in here first and they took out three Chaos Dwarf blunderbusses specifically so that they weren't able to fire, including the Regiment of Renown a Granite Guard here. Who also just look absolutely amazing. Gotta love the Granite Guard. But anyway. Alright, well, the uh, Flyers may have uh, done what they needed to do there, but they are now stuck completely surrounded by piles upon piles of Chaos Dwarves and their slave laborer force. Looks like Astrogoth uh, Iron Hand has fallen somewhere to Abarash's blade, but while well, we expected no less, and we certainly didn't expect it to take too long either. Look away for a second blink and the enemy has lost their head. We have sent our cavalry now to chase down that other unit of blunderbuss while we continue healing our Disciples of the Path. And by the looks of it, they didn't lose any models, or if they did, we were able to get them back up with the uh, with the healing, so uh, that's just fine. No more blunderbusses means the enemy force is in pretty dire straits now. They certainly have a few their basic range units. I see a bunch of hobgobs running around in the background, but they're of no threat to us. 
Oh, and I missed it here, but the enemy did use the Dreadquake Mortar Barrage. Unfortunately, it did not use it on our infantry. If, um, if it was unclear at the start, I deployed our infantry essentially sort of far away from each other, like our nine units of infantry in a box, but uh, completely spread out so that the Dreadquake couldn't hit two units at the same time. Our cavalry, however, was not deployed in such a manner and were very close to each other, so the AI decided to attempt to drop the Dreadquake Mortar on our two units of cavalry, our, our not the Knights of the First Keep, but the uh, uh, but the uh, Disciples of the Path Knights instead. Unfortunately for it, with their 68 one short as uh, speed uh, they just outran the uh, barrage as it was coming down and the AI got absolutely nothing out of that ability. Shame for them, I guess, and it looks like with that, their army is defeated. Very nice. Very nice indeed. I was going to say another one of those uh, lightning uh, strikes, the Duranon's Thunderbolt things that happen when Aberash attacks with his weapon uh, to come down. But anyway, we're going to do a little bit of chasing here, mostly for the blunderbusses and stuff, as we'll want to auto-resolve the rest of the army. But we're looking pretty good, and we got that sweet, sweet 15% missile resistance, which would help against any future blunderbusses. Well, darn, I forgot to, uh, forgot to heal somebody. Uh, who was it? Just out of curiosity. Uh, 2020, 20, 16, 16, 16, 27, oh, one of the Blood Dragon Neophyte Warriors. Darn, oh well. Uh, obviously, uh, not a deal big or otherwise. We, uh, we got a close victory, probably due to the mana expenditure and healing everybody back up, but otherwise, we're just fine. I'm very happy that Astrogoth has finally, at last, been hunted down. And, oh, we can just, uh, we can just enthrall all the captives and that'll heal you back up. Anyway, oh, lovely. Uh, how do we do here? Uh, 12k on the Circle of Blood, who did particularly well, and 16k on one of the Disciples of the Path, uh, Knight units, 143 kills on this warrior unit, and, well, they did lead the charge, so it doesn't make sense why these guys got out-killed the regular and um, Blood Dragon units. A very little damage on the Blood Canasperin, but we didn't really use him to fight this time around, and while I'm sure we could rack up more kills by transferring forming Death Guard Champion into a snake form. We don't do that in this army. All right. Very nice. Ooh, that was a long hunt for Astrogoth. I'm so glad he actually uh, came down uh, this way. And Itza, you want peace now? Well, you know what? Until uh, until we move... Uh, Mm, yeah, until we move the Aberash over here, if we should do so, we can peace out with Itza. We don't actually have anything against them. Really, we don't have anything against most factions, although I guess uh, Wallach's uh, little sub-faction of Blood Dragons don't particularly like uh, the Imperials for uh, destroying uh, uh, Blood Keep. Uh, it's a gift best take it or leave it... Oh, wait, best take it or I'll get mad. I just assumed that would set Ali. Really? And you're willing to offer us 10k? Yeah, good luck with that, Grimgore. Probably didn't appreciate being defeated, but, uh, well, we'll still want to defeat him with Aberash if we can make our way on down. Uh, Buck Buck the Lethal, Peace Treaty now. Alright, and you still have that army of yours, and it looks like Ulrich Foss still did not attack us, which is great. Uh, can you land? By the looks of it, no. Alright, can you be very close to landing? At the very least, it'll mean next turn you'll be able to attack this guy. Hopefully he doesn't attack while you've done this, but uh, we shall see. I also hope that it counts, as in if he attacks the Awakening here, and the Abyssal Revenant come in, co comes in as a reinforcement, I hope it counts for the purpose of uh, getting a, a special unit. Anyway, Astragon, effect duration plus 10% for Lord of Hashut, Death, Fire, and Metal Spells. I wonder if our spells count as fire spells, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted the uh, Great and Worthy Act that gives us a 15% missile resistance wide for the entire First army, or targets. army wide. 25% missile resist for these guys now, and for some reason 28% missile resist on these guys. Alright. Quite nice to have. Anyway, you quickly raise Fort Dwarslav. This I'm sure will hurt some of our units, but oh well. 
And try not to move too far. Don't cross the river. Okay. <laughs> uh, the panic sets in. Uh, I don't think you want to build anything right now, so we're going to pop you into this. To oh, right, we have attrition here. Now there's no point. Uh, what we would like to see is what level Karak Doom is. So, all right, student, which is not necessary. And, huh? You're a hero. You're telling me you can't... You can't discover ruins? Oh, well, that was unexpected. Oh, we have to send Abarash over there. I mean, oh, it took him two turns to get all the way over there. Mm, all right, fine. <laughs> I mean, it could be a tier five since we're all the way up here. Anyway, maybe we maybe we don't head through the Dark Lands and go after Grimgor. I was going to head over here and defeat uh, uh, defeat everybody on the way here. Clan Moors, Skarsnik's clan faction, and uh, Clan Rictus. Maybe whoever's down here, possibly Grimgor, and then all the way to Scarbrand and some of the other good, strong, duelist lords. Oh, look, it's uh, as I come around again. Uh, up here, we do have Boris Ursus, but he has no chance against Astrogoth. I don't know where Archaon is. We have the Kislefite lords up here and Throg, and Festus, who does have a decent defeat trait. Hmm. The thing is, I really wanted to get Trutch Craventail's defeat trait. Uh... Devastating flanker for the entire army. It sounds pretty strong to me. Uh, what does Scarsnake have? Lightning strike battles when reinforcements are... I mean, that's fine. It doesn't really matter all that much, but it's uh, it's in theory fine. Mm, who else do we have? Imric is fire resistance for the entire army. Ooh, Orion gives you speed for the entire army, which ain't too bad. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff everywhere. Ooh, Nakari gives you more speed. I like that very much as well. I got uh, spoiled by the Slan the speed of the Slaneshi Chaos Warriors slash Chosen in the Archaeon campaign because they just they just book it. They just run so so quick. It's uh, it's quite impressive and nice. Anyway, anyway, I think with that, there's probably not another battle that we can have this turn, and there's probably a little bit of admin to do, which I'm going to take care of between the episodes. So this is going to be uh, the place I call a little bit earlier, but uh, well, the last time or the time before that, and we didn't reach the engagement threshold. So there it is. However, if we do reach the engagement threshold this time around with 300 likes and 40 comments then the next episode will be an hour long as well though frankly i don't know how long this episode is gonna be but well we'll see we'll see i'm trying <laughs> more blood dragons to come hopefully we can get one of the library quests up and running next episode because we'll be able to take lamia to start off so stay tuned for that don't forget to leave a like and comment all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching